Hello, Pisces. Welcome to October 2023, where the sky is opening up the ability for you to have some serious success through the word travel, as well as things to do with legal matters working out because you're going to town to win the day. You also may find that things to do with your primary love relationship may also blossom during the month of October, even if there is a bit of a spell of distance between the two of you. I also really like this month in general for all things to do with the meaning of your life and getting a bit of a handle on what the hell you're here for you know what's the meaning of your life Pisces so let's talk about that as we go through this month's ahead story but if you're new to my channel and you haven't been here before welcome my name is Lori Lothian I'm using the western tropical zodiac and whole sign houses and I'd love the minor asteroids and fixed stars and if you stick around you get a lot of that in my 26 to 30 videos that I put out every single month and I'm having a webinar I don't think if I remember to mention it in all of my recordings, but I'm having a eclipse webinar uh, on the 10th of October for free replay available to talk about that Libra eclipse, the first in the eclipse series that's coming up October 14th and dive into your sign and teach you how to use that eclipse energy or understand the meaning of it in your sky. So join me on that free webinar description link below. We will not be talking. We will not be talking about eclipses in this longer video, this shorter video, because those eclipses in Taurus on the 28th of the month of October and the 14th in Libra of October are too detailed, too much to talk about. They're really basically lunations, right? But we're not going to cover them here. So I'll have other videos, just all sides videos on my channel in a deep dive into those. So make sure you sign up for my channel so that you get that content uh, and your notification bell tells you when it happens. Let's go into the week, uh, month ahead. One, whoo, we feel a new fresh air a difference in the sky. We feel things have changed because we have three planets moving into new signs. There is sense a sense of something going in a new direction or things moving in new directions for all of us in our lives, in new areas of reality. So what we have is the planet Mars, the planet Venus, and the planet Mercury making a lot of no noise in the sky as they go through new places in our sky. Let's begin and talk first of all, maybe about Venus only because she is your exaltation Lord. She loves the Pisces place where she you get special treatment by Lord Jupiter. So you have a special relationship with her. And what has happened is she spent a long time in Leo, which is maybe not your favorite place. That's your sixth house Pisces, where it's your health and your workhouse. And she was there June, July, August, September into October the 8th when she leaves that sixth house. And because that house is often connected to difficult things, she is a benefic. She was trying to improve your health, improve your work and health routines, improve your pet stories, improve your debt stories, or even your rental contract and lease stories. It's still a place that she's having to do her best like a good person in a bad house basically or difficult house uh, she was traveling with juno the goddess of business and love contracts and agreements and will be until already right all the way until october the um eighth when she leaves uh for your seventh house so it could open up in the first 12 so eight days of October, a, a new relationship that solidifies as long-term if you're dating someone and you're single, or a contract or business agreement formulate, formulating in the last, um, if it hasn't already, in the, in the first eight days of October. But it could also be the last week of September. And then Venus moves into your seventh house. And if she's going to be in her fall, and she doesn't like being in Virgo. She's like very temple priestess, kind of sometimes semi-celibate here. And she's moving through that seventh house, acting very prim and pure and priestessy. But that is your your contractual agreements, your business relationships, and your marriage house, where she's going to be for a month, October the 8th to November the 8th. Now, this is can give you really good um outcomes legally through females during that time. Also, if you have a significant relationship in your life, then during this October 8th and November 8th, it may be that that relationship goes through a bit of a um, more celibate, less sexual energy, basically, you know, and, and the relationship kind of takes on a more noble or higher priestessy or sacred spiritual energy for some reason. But there are some amazing things she's going to be doing while she moves through your seventh house. And we're talking about that as we break down the chronological details of the month ahead. Um, we also have the planet Mars after moving through the sign of Libra, a place of difficulty for him, um, leaving Libra on October the 12th. And he will be there out of Libra into Scorpio, his home kingdom, all right, his home kingdom for a long time. That's going to be October 12th until about the 24th of November. Now, before we talk about what he'll do there, let's talk about what he was trying to do in your eighth house of chunky money, your Libra place. He likes to cut, sever, and end. 
time to sell something time to cut out of a uh, out of a mortgage time to refinance time to make big changes in the resources you have with your spouse or business partner this can also look like a lot of passion and drive around the acquisition of loans mortgages and bank loans even by you or your significant other in business or love and that story would have been ongoing for six weeks but as of october 12th it's being retired out by mars as it finishes up there though the end of september the beginning the first 10 days of october he's bumped into that south node he's going to be opposite a moon on september 29th in the house of earnings so there's a big energy of intensity around surrender release and let go right of, of financial issues financial situations in those first 12 days of october and te technically if you're a pisces sun moon arising that north node is expanding your earnings or drive to earn money and asking you to actually do that over the next couple of years and so there's a pulling away from let's say resources that are more um money making money investment money 401k money save uh you know living off your credit card or things like that so there's a pulling away from eighth house monies and you'll start to feel the intensity of that maybe the last week of september and the first 12 days of october as that south node mars thing really picks up now when Mars moves into Scorpio in your ninth house, this is a big deal. This is going to reset your life to do with foreign lands and foreign shores, legal and court matters, third marriages, book publishing, academic environments for two years. Mars will die in the heart of the sun November 17th. There's going to be a whole video about that. But that's the place where things change big time. Sometimes it just feels turbulent if you don't want the change, but there's going to be a huge amount of change there. And that can do do a lot for you you could be, end up traveling to far off lands leaving your home country moving to a foreign country um having some massive legal settlement work out or not work out mars is trying to win the day legally for you uh, over those two years but we're not going to do the two-year view right now we're just going to say in october starting on the 12th through to the 24th of november if you need to win a, a battle in court i mean mars is invisible that's a bit of a challenge but he is still mars and scorpio and he's resetting a button in november so there's a lot of intensity about these themes if you need to get let go of a religion a spiritual faith a belief i mean he'll help you do that too time to cut out of the church quit the quit the ashram or whatever else you'll you'll be cutting away from those things as well not just this october november but even in in a bigger way over the next two years. Um, Mars moving through this part of your sky though, brings you ambition, drive and power during October 12th to November 24th. If you need to get success in travel, foreign shores, foreign lands, especially if those those areas that you're trying to activate have anything to do in your chart anyway, anything to do with how you would like to perhaps, you know, create a, um, you know, an entrepreneurial uh, endeavor that involves the word international or something like that. Um, this is a, this is a place where you really have to think about what the meaning of life is. It's a, it's a house of God and it's where the temples and religions are, but also the spiritual faiths and the mystics as well. And Mars here is going to do a big reset here. So a lot of you are going to really change your views about God, life, spirituality, have some massive shift. You may feel the early wave of that or the first sense of it coming through the sky this October 12th through to November 24th. Okay. Now, what we want to talk about Mercury. Yeah, sure. Let's go through it. Mercury, two months in Virgo. Very rare. Haven't seen it since 2016, August through to October. Mercury did, this, did the same long stay this time, this year, August 23rd, I believe. Now he's leaving Virgo, leaving Virgo on the 5th of October. Now, his journey through Virgo for you because he retrograded he was there for a long time was in your significant business and marriage partnerships house and also the audience and marketplace that serves your 10th house endeavors so a lot of negotiations conversations and contracts agreements business deals or conversations uh with somebody significant in your life has been a big staple august through to october 5th now that's leaving and he's moving into your libra house where he has a minor dignity he's pretty he has a triplicity dignity here he's somewhat strong he's moving through your eighth house of chunky money now that can be very good for you because he will help you because he's like the accountant the details guy he's the guy with the ideas right um and it's a good place for him he rules markets mercantile merchandising he rules stock markets he's moving through a house of investments and you may have some really new ideas communications or insights in how to 
win the day in your chunky money during his transit through here the dates i gave you if i didn't are october 5th to the 21st and this is a good time for you to really also check out the books negotiate deals around financial things refinance a mortgage um, all of those kinds of things uh, pay down a credit card but more importantly, Mercury can help you really get some superior ideas in order to shore up those other kinds of finances. You may also hear, communicate, email, phone call about some potential revenue coming to you, money coming to you from your family of origin. Since Mercury does rule your fourth house of your childhood and your family of origin, and potentially money may show up in that part of your sky. Um, and, and also maybe money that involves potentially an elder sibling because of the Pluto placement relative to the Mercury narrative. After Mercury finishes on the 21st of October and moves on the 22nd, he goes into Scorpio where he meets up with Mars who arrived there on the 12th of October. This is going to be a very intense energy. It's going to be very uh, like wow around the very end of October with what the two planets are doing together. And I'll be talking about that in the chronology. In general though, having Mercury for about three weeks, go October 22nd, add three weeks in your Ninth house is really good for visas, passports, passport applications, um, distance travel, travel to countries foreign than your own, getting a book a deal agreement for book publishing, uh, getting a negotiation, mediation and court settlement done. Um, those are very, very strong placements for support that Mercury can bring in that ninth house starting on the 22nd of October onward. Now they're gonna, gonna we're gonna go down through the chronology. So bear with me, it's gonna take a bit of time, but we're gonna break it down as the whole of the month unfolds. Number one, I'm just wiggling around guys. It's like I'm standing recording videos all day. Number one, at the beginning of the month, there's some sweetness here. Mercury will come into a trine to Pluto. That is definitely looking like chunky money, uh, eighth house through uh, a friend, an ally, a benefactor, a powerful, wealthy friend helping you with your money story, an elder sibling giving you some money or some kind of great gain from your career that you can then parlay into some other successful financial endeavors. So there's this big money glow up October the 1st to the 3rd. Well, at the same time, Neptune is opposite did I say that right? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. I apologize. Oh, I've been doing two videos too long. It's a glow up of money, not chunky money. Take it back. Take it back. Mercury's still moving through the tail end of Virgo, but he's trining Pluto in the house of great gains or wealthy, superior friends with great power. And it's in the house of deals, negotiations and contracts. So a contract with a sibling and a communication from a sibling, money from a sibling, money from a friend, a deal with a friend, a powerful ally or benefactor serving you some good news coming through the sky October 1st to the 3rd. I apologize for the glitch in the beginning. I cannot re-record this, so don't don't troll me about that, please. And um, then moving on, October the eighth to the tenth, Mars is is a difficult week or, or difficult window of time, really. October eighth to the tenth is going to feel difficult for the world. Pluto and Mars square off, okay. At the same time, Venus opposes Saturn. Eek! So Pluto in Libra not his home sign, not a comfortable place. In fact, he's in detriment. He's weak here, he's trying to be a diplomat. He doesn't want to be squaring Pluto in the 11th house. You could have a big blow at about money with a friend, with an ally, with a group of belonging, a big financial blow at conversation or difficulty even with somebody who is um, supposed to be a benefactor, supposed to be helping you, even somebody potentially connected to your workspace if you have a clear and clean workspace so there's a conflict and a power struggle energy october 8th to 10th and probably involves money it could involve uh, secrets and, and things coming out into the open it's also very challenging so look for some explosive difficult tension around power and control um, around october 8th to the 10th and it may very well involve money and then venus is going to be from Libra, from Virgo, your seventh house of significant partnerships opposite Saturn, there's a blowout with a business partner, a client, or even perhaps some tension with your significant other on that small window of October 8th to the 10th. So you might have to figure out um, maybe your partner wants to do something fun. Maybe your partner wants to have um, and some time without sex. You know, I'm just making up a story because, of course, she's in her more priestessy mode, the Venus thing. I, that just man or woman, it doesn't matter. Or maybe there's just some kind of female coming into the story that is giving you some kind of pause or difficulty because you're Saturn. You're the one with a realistic view of things. You're the one with the hard ass, you know, let's, you know, be realistic. Let's uh, contain the situation with a Venus who's fallen. No, not in good shape. So um, 
Venus rules your house of siblings, your you know third house of siblings. So again, it can also involve a sibling story for some of you, or perhaps even some uh, tension around a travel, a plan or situation with a significant business or love partner that blows up a bit October 8th to the 10th. All right. Um, October the 12th to the 14th, we love this sky. It's so positive and lucky and opportune. And we haven't seen this kind of sky that I'm about to describe since 1960, 1995 and before that 1965. And that's Mars moving through home Scorpio October 12th to the 14th at zero degrees in a flow of luck and opportunity and expansion to retrograde Saturn in Pisces at zero degrees now zero degrees can be a lucky degree so we have some luck and beginners luck here and this is energy to do with you and your what you realistically want to achieve in your life and things to do with those courts travel plans foreign shores foreigners foreign lands third marriages book publishing academic environments super glow up but you could be working hard to achieve something you'd be driven determined passionate to get across the finish line and that passion is coming through the ninth house so as you apply yourself to the travel to the visas to the book publishing or whatever you're doing in that ninth house that passion is paying off for you in some way as successful long-term results so look for what you're working on october 12th to the 14th because it pays off off maybe go back to 65 and 95 probably most of you only remember 1995 and try to imagine around the same time of year what kind of stories might have been percolating around that kind of intensity October the 19th to the 21st Mercury will be in the heart of the Sun on the 20th but you bracket it there 19 to 21st Mercury Sun conjunction yay but at 26 degrees of Libra resetting something on the south node of fate conjunct persephone where are you have you felt like a victim in your chunky money stories your savings your 401k your investments have you felt like you've been dragged to the underworld and you want to become the victor the queen of the underworld and resolve the challenge because this is a reset button and over the two weeks that follow the 20th of october you'll see yourself resetting a story strategically in this part of your sky because we have strategy goddess athena even maybe looking at things through the lens of lawyers or lawmakers or laws because Athena often involves law but you're solving and resolving a situation I think um, this reset button though with the south node is letting go releasing and surrendering as well an old way of doing or being around those chunky money narratives it includes an alimony spousal support inheritance monies as well as investments banks and loans okay insurance payouts taxes and stuff like that um, we move forward to October 21st to the 24th and then we have a very happy week everyone should be celebrating enjoying it having fun we're going to have venus she's going to be trining jupiter this is so lucky two luck gods loving each other up two good gods loving each other up so venus is in her detriment sure she's fallen in in the sign of virgo jupiter and taurus is in her home sign she's giving him orders from the seventh house this looks like travel for a lot of you with a significant business or love person or because of a business partnership or agreement or a new contract could even be a new job contract as jupiter rules your 10th house from the third house it suggests though there could be also things to do with travel involved in this lovely opportunity energy october 21st to the 24th and it also could just be travel to see a uh, significant love relationship person or if you're traveling and you're single as a pisces meeting that person for the first time october 21 to the 24th with also at the same time the sun in a trine to Saturn, the sun is moving through Scorpio, Scorpio season, trining Saturn in the house of you. Again, more of a glow up to do with that foreign lands, visas, travel, third marriages, energy. So there's a lot of travel involved here around 21st to 24th, or plans to travel or opportunities for travel can be very big. Finally, you could also be having opportunities around learning that are very positive and, and like education and learning October 21 to 24. All right, so let's keep that in mind because it's so sweet. Then we move to the very challenging, very combustible and explosive energy of Mars opposite Jupiter in a way we haven't seen since 1999 and before that 1976. Well, we got Mars moving through the sign of, excuse me, I scratched myself, um, the sign of Scorpio opposite Jupiter in the sign of Taurus. This is around 11 degrees of both of those signs. Whoa. So Mars and Mercury are conjunct. So they're together beside each other. Explosive news, explosive information, explosive ideas, combustible intensity around those things. It's a ninth house placement. You could have a combustible story around a travel plan, around a foreign uh, shore, around an international theme, around an academic theme, 
Um, it could also be about the word publications. We publish podcasts, books, you know, websites, things you publish. And, and there's this intensity. And Jupiter, he's in your third house retrograde. He's going back over old ground until, you know, 29th of December. And he'll be at the 11th degree. And he's like, well, you know, I like to expand things over here in your, in your neighborhood, in your shops and restaurants, online world, in your sibling relationships. I want to expand things in your travel plans, especially shorter distance travel. And then Mars is up there having a hissy fit with, Mercury. Mars is stronger. He's in his home sign. So Mars is going to win the day. And like, it could be something as simple as a, a trip with the sibling is going to fall apart, or you had a travel plan on a short distance route that's now going to have to become overruled because you have to go off to a faraway place instead. That kind of thing may be happening here. Um, hmm. Okay, so that's that. And we're going to finish up strong at the end of the month. Really lovely sky as Venus trines Uranus. Venus will move into flow with a goddess of, god of surprises, shock, and unexpected developments, Uranus, or originality and invention. But anyway, in Taurus. And now Uranus is retrograde, but that he's so slow. He's always retrograde half the time. And Venus is trining him from your seventh house. So this is love and money things, right, that are unexpected but positive to do with writing, communicating, websites, publications, local neighborhood, and travel, and Venus in your seventh, a significant partner, client, or business partner, nice, sweet glow, a big glow up. If you have something you put into the world, like an audience and marketplace, and using the online world, this looks very much like maybe you go viral, maybe you have a big boom in your, uh, your, your visibility with your audience or marketplace as a result of the October 31st, give or take a day on either side, and Venus trying to Uranus. It may be connected to what Venus was trying to pull off in your sky earlier as well when she was trining Jupiter and I gave you those dates but I'll remind you of that positive sky October 21 to 24 may have a second wave of goodness on Halloween all right everybody thank you for listening if you're a Pisces sun moon and rising I appreciate you being here today don't forget to the bell for notifications and don't forget to come to my webinar if I didn't tell you um, we're doing the eclipse webinar on the 10th of October replay available get in there I'm going to dive into the deep meaning of the Libra eclipse on the 14th we're going to we're going to talk about what it might me for your sign based on your Venus placement. We're going to look at the cycle of that particular eclipse throughout time. So we're going to learn a lot and you're going to be able to use the content. A couple of PDFs, it's free. You get the replay. Why not sign up if you don't get the actual live call with me, Zoom teaching class, and you can um, definitely get the replay after. So check it out in my description box below. Maybe you'd like to join me. I would love to have you there. Thanks, Pisces. I will see you on my next videos. Please don't forget to like my channel. Thank you.